Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, webinar on GDPR, a practical solution for securing your documents. It is a follow-up on the event we had earlier this year in Brussels, and we wanted to present you again some practical means to cover the GDPR regulations on your unstructured content. My name is Peter Morel. I will be providing you a short introduction to Xenet Solutions. Then my colleague Ronnie Temmermans will present seven challenges for unstructured data related to GDPR. So with the solutions that we provide based upon our fresco you cannot cover all elements of gdpr but um, we detected seven challenges and we would like to run through them um, related to unstructured data related to documents then Thais lemons will provide a demonstration of these practical solutions that we um, worked upon and uh, Willem van den Ende will at the end provide you a demonstration of a DPA processing agreement and the communication with your customers and contacts um, that needs to be executed uh, to cover the GDPR requirements. At the end, we will have uh, some Q&A sessions and that should conclude the webinar in about one hour. So Xenit is a long-term our fiscal partner and we focus on providing solutions for unstructured content. Based upon our knowledge, we have developed extra software functionalities and components, products, which we brand under the name of Alfred. So we will demonstrate a few of these and, uh, during this webinar. And um, uh, we have assembled uh, with these solutions some functionalities that will help uh, cover the GDPR requirements. So we also do some hosting um, of our Fresco platforms and uh, we have a specific solutions on um, Alfred archiving, the long-term archiving of uh, massive volumes of documents. The customers that we cover, we can categorize them in, in three domains. Um, one is insurance and finance, in which we have uh, several customers that have uh, up to uh, uh, 80 million documents in an archive. We have a second category, which are engineering and infrastructure. And so uh, really large scales uh, operations and all the documents that are related to these activities. And a third category is uh, government. Uh, a lot of government bodies are using our fresco because of its uh, quality of uh, organizing repositories and providing the right access and uh, providing an excellent search capabilities in these environments. So we have started the company in 2007 and are our Frisco certified partner uh, since then. Um, our software components that we developed are certified by our first school, and these solutions are available to our customers, um, our first school customers, and also our first school partners uh, to be used into their um, solutions they build for their customers. We have a number of uh, customers, uh, 60 plus customers in, in 10 countries. And as you can see, um, uh, the range of it um, is from very small to very large organizations. Um, 
Most recently, we have two departments in the city of New York that joined us um, as a customer, uh, but we have also um, the city of Munich, or more specifically, Stadtwerke München, which is uh, responsible for the distribution of gas, water, and electricity. Um, these kind of organizations are amongst our customers. So it's a wide variety of um, a type of customers and all are affected by the GDPR uh, regulations. So I hand over uh, the presentation to Ronnie Timmermans, uh, who will be uh, running over some challenges uh, that are related to unstructured data. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, the first slide, there's only two to be treated by myself before we go to the main dish, uh, the presentations and the demos. Um, what we wanted to address is the seven challenges as we have already presented them in previous webinars. Um, I'll quickly go through them. First of all, there's data classification. Of course, if you want to protect your information, uh, you need to know whether it's uh, personal information, whether it's sensitive information or not GDPR related at all. And how can you, we help you to automate that process? Uh, secondly, there is uh, specific security on documents and metadata because the GDPR requires different roles to access that kind of information. It imposes an uh, additional security layer on top of your repositories like Alfresco. Access control, uh, how fine-grained can you do that? How can you um, take into account GDPR access control rules on top of what Alfresco already uh, offers? And how can you monitor access to information, which is very uh, important? Offline storage, whenever you create copies of documents, are they safe? Um, do they represent a potential breach? or uh, will we be able to control uh, that uh, copying of information, make sure no copies escape and are seen by uh, unauthorized eyes. Breaches, breach detection is a, is a challenge. You want to monitor access to your system. You want to monitor specifically access to private and sensitive information. And you want to know whether there is irregular uh, access or um, uh, let's say, um, suspect access to larger quantities of privacy information. We want to be able to detect that. There is the uh, deletion of documents. That's just a good basic sound rule. That is, whenever you don't need that private information, make sure you delete it, but that is easier said than done. You have to detect whether you have that kind of information. So there you can use uh, technology we are developing and also plain and simple metadata to find that kind of information. And then uh, the last challenge is about uh, the control of usage of uh, documents and information uh, by third parties, where we've also developed a safe link mechanism, but this will uh, demonstrate that to you in the um, demonstration part. Okay, those are the seven challenges. That um, from those challenges, we uh, are offering a uh, Alfred GDPR approach architecture to allow you to address those seven challenges and to build in protection layers in your Alfresco or other architectures. If you look at the picture from the bottom up, the first operation is information you have in the cloud, in Office, in Drive, in shared drives, even in Alfresco. You want to uh, run that through a detection module. What does that detection module do? It analyzes your documents. It will detect GDPR um, sensitive information, personal or sensitive information. Once we have classified uh, the information, you can, of course, if you then move up the picture at the upper half of the picture, Whenever you are accessing that kind of information now via the web, via desktop clients, via business applications uh, that you have in-house, for instance, Guidewire as a typical application in insurance sectors, you will um, go through a layer of um, protection. That means we have additional access control um, filters that we apply on top of standard office school access control. And you will also uh, pass through, let's say, a layer of control of respect 
that is users can um, express consent on uh, information and you will take into account that kind of consent in, um, in your operations with documents. Um, and that is of course a continuous cycle. On the left hand side you see the clients accessing information and we uh, run them through a protection and inspection and respect layer uh, which is built in our gateway, uh, Alfred Edge, before you access Alfresco uh, or other uh, third party systems. In our case of course supported third party um, or a document store is all fresco. That shows a little bit the image, the architecture, um, which gives us a frame uh, for the presentation that uh, days will run, uh, showing how we practically implement this. Okay. Now I will share my screen. So. My screen is visible. Great, so hello, I'm Thais Levens. I will present a little demonstration on some features, solutions we developed uh, in a GDPR context. We will start off with uh, a demonstration of the detection module where we will uh, discover personal and sensitive data in new documents. Uh, later on, we will show how we can automatically protect these documents. Uh, and then how we can share the documents with uh, people not having uh, the right to see the document. Uh, and in the end, we will show a little bit about how to audit what everybody has done on a certain document or on all documents and a possible detection breach. Well, first of all, personal data. This demo will show you uh, that we can detect a full name and also, uh, for example, a Belgian national number uh, and that is considered as personal data and will be labeled accordingly. Uh, later on, uh, the second demo will be sensitive data where we will discover credit card numbers. Uh, we will show this demo using Alfred Desktop. That's our desktop, Windows desktop view to Alfresco. Uh, and it's, it's a view on Alfresco with the ease of use of Windows Explorer uh, with drag and drop functionalities. The easiest way to show that is to just jump to the interface. So here I will connect to our demo server. And on the left side you see the folder tree of Alfresco and some other things like favorites. I open a folder in Alfresco, you can see it's opened on the right side where we already have one folder below. You can also see this on the left side. What I will do now is show you how to add two new documents. Two new documents are added and automatically some information is detected. So on the right side, we have a metadata pane. If I select a document, then the information about that document is shown in the metadata pane. I can now open up a spe special GDPR panel and we can see that there are names detected, in this case one name, John Doe, and therefore this document is labeled as containing personal data. Also, this document contains a national, uh, Belgian national number and that document is also labeled with this number and we can also detect the, the, the language of the document. If you look now in the preview panel on the right, we're loading the preview, we can see actually that the number is inside and also the name is inside. Now back to the left side, there is a color coding for personal data and sensitive data. So for each user, it is immediately visible that this document contains personal data and this document I'm selecting now contains sensitive data. If I open now the metadata pane for the payslip, I can also see some GDPR related data. We found two credit card numbers and actually also a Belgian national number. Because we detected credit card numbers, uh, the document is labeled as sensitive data. 
I open the preview, this is a bigger document. Uh, the national number is found here. And on the bottom, we can find the two credit card numbers. So this concludes the demonstration of the detection part. So for the purpose of the demo, we will use Alfred Finder or web view to Alfresco with a search oriented interface to demonstrate how we can protect documents based on this metadata. Uh, Alfred Finder will be connected to exactly the same Alfresco, so we will be able to find the documents we uploaded uh, with Alfred Desktop. We will show in this demonstration how different profiles can see different documents based on the role they have in the company. The first role we have is Kelly. She is the DPO, Data Protection Officer, and therefore she needs to be able to see all documents like documents that don't contain any sensitive data, also documents that contain personal information, and documents that contain sensitive information. Then we have Cho from HR, and because Cho is in HR, he can see documents containing personal information. Uh, why? Because he needs to work with CVs, uh, for example. And then on the, uh, the last two, Profiles are both engineers, those are Carla and Tom, and they don't have to see any personal nor sensitive information, only documents that are not, protect, not protected uh, because they use technical documents. So if we now continue with the user Kelly, I switch to a browser and I will log in as the user Kelly. So for each of these profiles, I have a different browser uh, to log in with the right profile. So this is Alfred Finer. I will start with uh, putting a search for PDF documents in the search box. And now I receive search results. So now we can see a bit of the structure of uh, Alfred Finer. On the left side, we have uh, facets, so you can click, the, you can open this and you can see that there are actually documents uploaded by Alice Beecher and by administrator and it's possible to filter further by clicking on these. If I click on one of the search results, so this is the search results panel, the preview and metadata are opened on the right side. So in this case we have four PDFs in Alfresco. The first two ones were already uploaded before the demo. The last two ones are the ones we uploaded using Alfred Desktop. So if I now open the document with the Belgian number, we can see on the right side in the preview, we can see the same document. And there are some panels here. And we added a panel for GDPR related data and it contains the same data we saw in Alfred desktop before, like the Belgian national number and that it's labeled personal data and also John Doe, the name we found in the document. The second one is the pay slip. We see here that this one is, ma uh, is marked as sensitive data and we found also a Belgian national number and we found two credit card numbers. So this is the same information we saw before in Alfred Desktop. Now, uh, this profile, Carla can see everything. So she saw the documents, uh, this is Kelly, sorry. Uh, she can see everything. So documents containing personal data and sensitive data and also non-protected documents. If we now go to our profile, Joe. Joe is from HR, I will now log in as Joe. And I will do exactly the same search. The result is slightly different because Joe doesn't have access to sensitive documents. Now we only have three results. And for the rest, it's all the same. We can see GDPR related metadata and click on all the results. 
Then we have our last uh, two profiles, Carla and Ton, the engineers. I will start off with Carla. Carla and Ton only see one document uh, because the other documents are marked as personal or sensitive. But this one is no problem to see. We go to tone, same thing. So now we showed actually that documents are automatically protected. Why? Because GDPR related metadata is detected and the document is classified in a GDPR uh, way and uh, the different role, roles are actually applied on the metadata. So now back to the slides. Uh, what we can show now is uh, Kelly can see everything, uh, but Joe, for example, from HR, he can see uh, personal documents. Let's say Joe wants to ask Carla, an engineer, to review a resume of Days Levens, which contains personal data and is therefore protected. Then he needs to use a share link because Carla cannot see the document as an engineer. Uh, what Joe can do is share a temporary link, only limited, uh, val valid for a period of one week. Uh, and that way Carla will be able to see the document anyway. If we now switch to Joe again, let's open the CV. We can see this is a CV. And we have now a special button, share link. And I now want to share it with Carla. I select Carla and I press the share button. Now a link is generated containing all the information, also the user that it's actually Carla I want to send the link to. Uh, now I can send this link uh, on a chat application or an email, uh, but Let's say that uh, Carla uh, receives the link and makes a mistake and shares it with Tom. So now I go to the profile of Tom and Tom will try to open the link. This is not possible because this document is not meant for Tom, it's meant for Carla and we will get a message that Tom cannot open this link. If we now go to the profile of Carla, she uses the same link. She is able to open the document. Uh, and what we can see now is that this is not exactly the same document uh, because a watermark is added. On the right upper corner, we can see a QR code and this QR code contains information that allows the DPO uh, to track this document back to the original and knows who, who opened or printed this document. And also there's a watermark indicating that Carla opened this GDPR document. This is, this is a visible, visible indication for Carla that this document contains sensitive or personal information and she should be careful with it and not print it, for example. So if we now go back to the presentation, we see here that Joe successfully shared a link with Carla and she could open it. The link is valid for one week. Uh, Carla accidentally shared the link with Tom and he tried to open it, but that didn't work. Now, Carla was able to review the CV and give information that should allow uh, HR Joe to uh, hire someone or not. Now to the last part of this demonstration, we will have another one later. Uh, we will show you how we can audit what happened and detect breaches. And we will go for this to another web interface. This web interface is called Kibana. I mean, I will re uh, reload the recent results. So 
what you can see here is a table actually of what happened. So the first column is the time when happened an action, when the action happened, and then the user who did the action, and then what kind of action it was, like read, and we also have create, and also GDPR access or GDPR access failure. And in the last column, which what document are we talking about? And here we have a nice visualization about the number of uh, the number of actions that happened during a certain amount of time. And now we are filtering for the last 15 minutes. And we can see we start off with actually the actions we did in Alpha Desktop. We added two new documents, and we were able to view those uh, documents. Later on, all of the users like Kelly, Joe, Carla, Tom uh, read some documents. That's when we clicked and we watched actually the preview. And then uh, we went back to Joe from HR going to that specific CV document. And uh, Joe generated a GDPR link. Uh, and the first one who tried to exit the, this document was Tom. I can now open actually the details of this document. Uh, and the, the event that happened was an access failure on a GDPR uh, protected document. And in the message, we can clearly see failed to access GDPR link issued for a different user, Karma. So this is very clear. Later, Karma tried to open the same link, and this document uh, was for her, so that was successful. So we can see now that Carla accessed the GDPR document. Another feature of this interface is that we can actually filter on the different data in this table. Like for example, if we only want to see the actions that happened on the CV of days 11, so we can actually press a filter button. And now I will close the things I opened and I have only the results for this specific document. Now back to the presentation. So what we showed was that we actually can follow up all the actions that happened on our document repository. Also, uh, breach detection because Tom tried to open a document that was not meant for him. Well, now I will pass the presentation to Willem. And he will show us something about data processing agreements. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I'm uh, Willem. Uh, I'm a team lead and IT architect here at Xinit. Uh, and we did a project together with the clients uh, about uh, data processing agreements. Um, yeah, I will first give you a little bit of context about the project that we did, and then I will present you uh, a solution um, that we made. Um, yeah, it was the context was that um, for GDPR you had to uh, have some uh, written consent uh, when somebody processes your data, and uh, this document, this doc, um, data processing agreement, is about that. Uh, the challenge for this case was that they had to communicate this document to fifteen thousand uh, customers. If it was only a dozen, they just have, could have done it by email or by letter or even yeah, um, in a manual way. But uh, for this specific case, we had to automate it as much as possible. Um, uh, we did that uh, by creating links like these. Uh, these are links to uh, documents in our FESCO repository. Uh, they are similar to the link that Tash passed through before. You can see in the link that there is a kind of security hash um, to protect the documents. Uh, the idea for the solution was also to make it as frictionless as possible. Uh, so there was no complicated sign-up form. Um, um, I will demonstrate the solution. So on the left, you see the documents that the customer has to approve. Um, you can see that uh, it already has some um, metadata filled in. 
the metadata that you see on the right in the form is actually uh, registered inside this document. Uh, so in the beginning, when we send out this email, we ask the customer to verify um, his data or to, and to complete it. For some clients, we already had more information that was already uh, pre-filled. So you can see that this form does a validation steps to make sure that everything is uh, filled in. I will quickly fill it in. We also, in order to make it a legal uh, sign, uh, we ask for two things. Uh, one, the function of the one who signs it, and also uh, is to confirm that he has the uh, mandate to sign uh, for the company. Yeah, here you can see that the metadata that was filled in on the right is also um, injected into the documents. And the last step that the client has to do is just to approve it. Um, and then the document is approved. Uh, you can also download the document and um, view it back later for his um, own uh, keeping. So all in all, um, this, was, this project was uh, quite a success. Um, because it was quite frictionless for end users. It only took them uh, three or five minutes to read the document, fill in the metadata, and we got an uh, extremely high approval rate uh, when sending out those emails. Um, yeah. um, the emails were actually sent out in uh, three waves. The first wave was a kind reminder to fill in uh, the document. The second wave, um, uh, was to the people who didn't yet approve it and was still a, a reminder. And the last wave was an automatic consent um, to approve the document. Um, yeah. There was one small detail. Um, um, this, the status of a document, that it's approved or not, is integrated into the client is uh, CRM database so that it's uh, updated in that way. Um, and this was the end of the demo. Stop sharing. Okay. Um, well, I think, Willem, you might want to illustrate. Yeah, we can uh, recap the challenges again. Mm -hmm. um, so there were four, four challenges eh? that would be very scalable because it was, uh, we had to communicate it to 15,000 clients. So we had to automate it. We automated it by creating an, uh, a link and send out um, emails with, uh, to a uh, CRM uh, system. Uh, it's integrated, so the contacts of the clients came from their existing CRM system, and there were also, their CRM system was also updated when uh, a client approved the documents, and so they had a clear status of which clients approved it and which not. Uh, customization, so the document that you see is can be customized uh, for each uh, product, let's say, or for each uh, contract. You can even use it for different kinds of documents. And also the document was generated based on the metadata that you say, uh, saw on the form on the right. Uh, and the status management, um, there we followed up the approval rates of the documents and send out uh, reminders to uh, increase the approval rate of those documents. Okay. Well, uh, thank you, Thais and Willem, huh, for those interesting presentations. 
Um, I guess that leaves us quite a bit of time for uh, questioning and, and answers and some discussions. Just wanted to add one point. Of course, we are collecting here information as you saw in the auditing. Again, you have to be careful for that with that because that could also be a GDPR uh, sensitive source of information. Yeah? Everything becomes kind of under the spell of GDPR and it becomes a reflex to be um, well at your governance with information, to keep that information, to protect that information. But in case of breaches, in case of uh, litigation, this is extremely uh, useful information. And it makes, I think, everybody in your organization also very aware of the fact that they have to be careful with private and sensitive information. Okay, well, um, I would say, are there questions uh, here uh, to be answered? Please, fire ahead. Oh, yeah. We've got a question uh, from uh, Dimitar. Can this work in Cyrillic alphabet? <laughs> That's a, uh, a good question. Um, I think we have to check that for the desktop solution in terms of uh, if you talk about the Cyrillic alphabet, there's a detection um, issue. Um, it can, but it needs to be trained if you want to do automatic detection. We're still progressing on that. Thais, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, so, so the detection module uh, needs to be uh, trained according to the language. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some models for uh, English and Dutch and German, uh, but we don't support any language yet with Cyrillic alphabet. But if we have example data, uh, it can be done. Yeah, okay, so, but uh, of course, huh, you know that there's a little bit of magic in NLP, but not everything is magical that needs to be trained, and we are still progressing on improving, uh, let's say, precision and recall in technical terms on how good uh, it can get, but it is for sure that you need to train it to uh, get very high hit rates on your automatic detection. The next question is, is the link always a one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, basis and you refer, Jean-Luc refers to the sharing of CV from Ton to Carla. I think again that's part of your demonstration uh, taste. Is it always on a one-to-one -one basis the link sharing? Uh, now it is but uh, it's not so difficult to add another check that you could uh, actually uh, send a link to a group of people and then to validate that the person that opens it is in the group of people. Uh, other solutions uh, like uh, sharing something with uh, somebody, somebody who is not authenticated outside the company, for example, is also possible maybe with an SMS validation or it's some, something along those lines. Yeah. I, so you could make it more sophisticated, extending it from an individual link to a group link is not that hard. Of course, if you start integrating it with external users where it becomes really interesting because you don't have to send them copies, you send them protected links. Uh, you need to do something about their authentication. Um, so we make sure that if you share it with an external user that we can verify uh, uh, via its authentication that that is the person that you sent the link to. Uh, so that th these are extension cases and I think we'll also learn in the coming weeks and months on what kind of features are really in high demand in the markets that we can build upon here. Do we have another question yet? No. Um, but well, the thing is, I think we're all, you're all muted, but it would be interesting to have uh, feedback on whether you think there are some things missing here in, uh, in, the, um, in the feature set that we showed. And it's not our ambition to be complete, but to have something that is useful in protection. And secondly, maybe whether there are other uh, features or features that you would have in a modified form. And we have one feedback on that on the, on the linking um, if you want to share that with us, that's fine. If not, uh, that might be on another uh, occasion. But I think we don't have 
more questions for now? No? no. So, um, Daniela, are there others? Yeah, no, I, I don't see any other question. I don't know, Peter uh, or Bart, if you want to add uh, some more context. No, um, I think uh, with this, uh, obviously everybody is uh, very busy with the GDPR as it uh, is very close. And uh, But this is an ongoing story. Um, the solutions for GDPR are not complete. Um, we are continuing to build upon it and uh, feel free to stay in touch um, and um, to get back to us if uh, these solutions that we have provided might be interested in interesting for your projects. Okay, that was the GDPR police, Peter, yeah. and your background. <laughs> <Right. Yes, yes. laughs> okay. As you can hear, I'm uh, over here in Washington, and uh, they are uh, chasing me uh, to send me back. <laughs> Keep safe. It's better not to come to Europe then. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, yeah, thank you for, uh, for taking your time. You can uh, always get in touch with us. Here you see the QR code. There's a link to our uh, website where you can uh, find other information. Thank you.